Welcome to our Wednesday morning devotions. Thank you for joining with me. We're looking at Philippians chapter 3 verses 7 to 11. If you would like to follow as we read this uh, together. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ, and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Amen. Paul, at the beginning of this chapter, has spoken of our inability to get right with God by our own efforts, whether our religious duties or our good works. If anyone could have got right with God, Paul saying he was the man, such a religious man, a Pharisee, so zealous in keeping God's law and serving God. But that didn't make him right with God. And he came to this conclusion in verse 7, a, a tremendous verse. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. He had to realise that all his good deeds, all his efforts to get right with God, were of no value if he was going to gain Christ as his saviour. He had to come to Jesus with nothing in his hands and rely fully on Christ for his salvation. And he expands on that thought about gaining Christ in verse number 8, where he says, Indeed I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ. Now as you listen to those words, you read those words, you see in Paul there is a, a tremendous excitement as he speaks about knowing Christ. For Paul there's nothing compared to knowing the Lord Jesus. Jesus has transformed his life. He was a persecutor of Christians. He hated the name of Jesus. He was heading to Damascus to do that. And then he met Jesus there, brighter than the noonday sun. And he was transformed. He became a new man by the grace of God when he met Jesus. And this is what a Christian is. Someone who has met Jesus, come to trust in Jesus, and their life has been changed by Jesus. Oh, let me ask you, are you excited about Jesus? Are you thrilled at the thought of who he is and what he's done for sinners like you and me? Oh, one of the marks of a Christian is indeed they're excited about Jesus. He goes on in verse 9 to speak about the important subject of righteousness, which basically means being right with God. How does this righteousness come? He says, And being found in him, that's in Jesus, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on on faith. Some try to be right with God by keeping the law. Paul says that's no value. He has found a new righteousness, the only righteousness, the only way he can be right with God. It comes through faith in Jesus. Take the thief on the cross. He had not been baptised. He had not taken communion. He had done no good uh, works. He had done no religious duties. And yet when he came trusting in Jesus, Jesus says, today you'll be with me in paradise. He went to heaven. He was declared righteous. He was right with God through simply trusting in Jesus. And as we trust in Jesus, who's died on the cross to save, trust him for that, then the perfect righteousness of Jesus that comes from his life of perfection, that is then placed in our account. It's as if we're bankrupt and owe millions and millions of pounds. 
where Jesus has billions of pounds in his account. When we trust in Jesus, the billions of pounds in his account is placed in ours. He takes our debt. We receive his fortune. We receive his righteousness through trusting in Jesus. This is called justification. A big word, but it's about being justified right in the eyes of God. This being justified through faith alone. That's the foundation on which the Christian life is built in. You need to be sure that you're right in that, that you're not trusting in religion or going to church or chapel or wherever. You're trusting in Jesus alone, what he has done to make you right with God. So justification, being right with God through faith alone, is the foundation of the Christian life. But the Christian life has so much more than that. Look what he says in verse 10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. What's the Christian life about? It's about knowing Jesus. It's this relationship with Jesus. It's going deeper with Jesus. He speaks there as well as knowing Jesus, knowing the power of his resurrection. Paul writing to the Ephesians, he, he speaks to the God who's able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine according to his power at work within us. It's that power of God within, which is the resurrection power of Christ being applied to us, making us new, changing us, transforming us within. Paul longed to know more and more of that part. He hated his sin. He hated how he let God die. And he wanted to know God's part of his life in a fresh way. Day by day. Becoming more like Jesus. You see you can't be a Christian and think. Ach, it doesn't matter if I live a life of sin. That's not a Christian. A Christian is someone who knows that Jesus has died. To rescue them from sin's guilt and sin's power. So they can live a different life. Paul talks about sharing in the sufferings of Christ. Uh, the NAV speaks about the fellowship of these sufferings. And it's as we struggle and face trial and opposition for Christ, we experience a closeness, a oneness with Jesus, which is so wonderful. Let's remember what caused Paul to sing hymns of praise in the Philippian jail when after being beaten. Jesus was with him. It was that fellowship of Christ in his sufferings. And it's particularly when we suffer for Jesus. It's then that we experience the closeness of his love and the tenderness of his comfort. And then finally in verse 11 he speaks about becoming like him in his death. That by any means possible I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. It's as we Die to self and die to sin. Have this sacrificial attitude towards God. It's when we come to experience that in our lives. We know that we're destined for the resurrection of the dead. <clears throat> At the end of this world Jesus is coming again. Every eye shall see him. And the dead bodies that will be put into the ground will be raised. The bodies the unsaved will be raised. The bodies of shame in which they'll be entered into hell forever. The bodies of Christians will be raised into bodies of glory where they'll enter into the new heavens and the new earth to serve and to worship the Lord forever. <coughs> where will you be on that day? Where will you be on that great day of resurrection? Will you experience the resurrection to glory? And so Paul's speaking here of two resurrections. He speaks there in verse 10 of the resurrection within, the, the power of Christ within us. This is rebirth, new life, becoming a new creation, a resurrection of our souls. <coughs> Excuse me. And then he speaks in verse 11 of the resurrection of our bodies. Oh, you'll not have your resurrection of your body to glory. Unless you've had that resurrection within, you've been born again, changed by the grace of God. Oh, you need to examine. Has that happened to you? Have you been changed by Jesus? Thank you for listening this morning. Just to remind you, you can tune in tonight at 8 o'clock for indeed our midweek if you're watching online. And we'll be continuing our studies in the book of Jonah. Thank you now.